Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. We have already covered Australia's relationship with names in the past, and I've been taking tongue-in-cheek jabs at them ever since. In that video, I summarised that Australian place names can be put into two main categories. There's the incredibly obvious literal place names like Western Australia, and places that hold onto native Aboriginal names like Bondi. However, there's actually something of a third side to this Australian nomenclature coin, that being weird and rude names that littered a nation. Whole maps have been created to highlight the bizarre names of the land down under. While these names can be found across the entire country, there seems to be a higher concentration of these odd names in one particular area of the nation, that being on the island of Tasmania. Yes, the island of Tasmania is a state of Australia, which many of you like to inform me of when I forgot to include it that one time. It seems that many people just presume that Tasmania is a wilderness island, and while it does have stunning scenery and very unique wildlife, presuming it's just an uninhabited island is far from the truth. It has a population of over half a million people and is the 26th largest island on our planet. It's around the same size as Sri Lanka. The island state is also home to some of the world's cleanest air and the world's oldest trees. As for that name, well it's a creation of European origins. Tasmania is named after Dutch explorer Abel Tasman who sighted the island in 1642. He however actually named it Van Diemen's Land in honour of Governor of the Dutch East Indies, Anthony Van Diemen. The name at Tasmania began life as a mere nickname for the island, in ode to its European founder. However, the name started to become more popular than the actual name and was officially changed in 1856. Of course, the island was inhabited way before Tasman even cited it, and its original Aboriginal names include Trawuna, Trawena, and Leo Trawitta. While Tasmania was once its nickname, it now has a different nickname, the Apple Isle. I've read two ideas as to why the island has this nickname. One being because in the past, the island was an important apple exporter, and the other idea being simply because it looks somewhat like an apple. Of course, while it's all well and good to look into the name of the island as a whole, we're really here to look into the specific names of settlements on the island. And this phenomenon of weird places in Tasmania can really be encapsulated in this map of the island. This small map has really made its way around the internet, and yes, I've been sent it a handful of times. It's actually part of a much larger map of weird Australian names as a whole, created by the Marvelous Maps Company. They have maps of other countries with weird names too, go check them out. They aren't sponsoring this video or anything, but I'm hoping if I say nice things about them, they may send me a free map or two. Anyway, it's understandable as to why this map has become so popular to share on the socials. Just look at some of the names we have going on here. From Shag Head, Wombat Flat, Little Hell, Pisspot Creek, Granny's Gut, Deep Fort, The Never Never, The Nipples, Snug, and Big Trumpeter Bay, just to name a few. The island is home to names that would make even the most respectable person smirk. How exactly did this island end up with so many weird and rude names? Of course, Tasmania slash Australia isn't the only place with rude names, and there's a select few reasons as to why place names can seem rude to us now. A prime reason is because of old words picking up new meanings. Take Shag Head as we just mentioned, a place in Tasmania. Or Shag is now a word we link with copulation. Initially, Shag was the name for a family of birds, and still somewhat is. I wouldn't be surprised if the Shag mentioned in this name relates to the bird, though as years went on and Shag took on this new meaning, the name became much more comical. As for the head part, this is a common term we apply to land by water. There's also a shag bay on the island too. Another reason why names can seem rude to English speakers is because an unassuming word in a foreign language can sound rude to us in English. While these ideas explain the occasional odd name, it doesn't help us with understanding why odd names appear at such a large scale on the island of Tasmania. Plus, it really can't explain some of the odder names on the island like Eggs and Bacon Bay, Lovely Bottom, and Ding Dong Rain forest. As to why they are so prevalent here, we don't seem to be too sure. When looking into this, there are countless articles poking fun at these names, but no one was really asking why they are so odd and so frequent. So for this one, I have to go into more name theory than name explain. What I'm about to talk about is an idea of my own creation, with little to no actual evidence. That's something I really want to make clear. While I primarily enjoy giving you guys the facts, sometimes the facts elude us and we have to go into tinfoil hat mode. So, 
what's my theory as to why these odd names are so commonplace? Well, it kind of roots from this single sentence I found on the Discover Tasmania website and their page about the island's odd names. They say these unusual place names reflect the island's colourful history. And when I think of colourful history in Tasmania, Australia's convict past comes to mind. Australia's history of convicts has become muddled over the years. A lot of the time people like to boil it down to the stereotype that all Australians are just descendants of thieves and criminals and they let that paint their entire impression of the nation. Of course we shouldn't base our idea of an entire nation on a stereotype but British convicts being sent there does play a role in the history of Australia. It's believed that one in five Australians today can trace their lineage back to a convict. Britain started sending convicts to their land in the 18th century. This was post-industrial revolution and the landscape of Britain changed drastically. Small villages in the British countryside were abandoned as people flocked to the big cities for work. And while there was work in these post-industrial revolution cities, there simply wasn't enough for everyone. So these cities became squalid and overcrowded with the unemployed who had no work and no money. This created something Britain had never really seen in a large scale before and something it still struggles with to this day, urban poverty. These people turned to crime simply to survive in this now changed world. They had to steal food to feed themselves. Of course, these crimes were taken seriously and the authorities had to deal with these new troublemakers one way or another. Serious crimes were punishable by death, but for petty things like theft, a prison sentence was installed. Soon enough, Britain's prisons were at max capacity. Britain simply needed somewhere to put all their inmates that their revolution created in the first place. With an empire at its fingertips, there had to be somewhere they could send them, right? To begin with, Britain actually sent their convicts to the Americas, but after a few battles and some catchy tunes, that wasn't really an option for the UK anymore. Australia, or New Holland as it was called at the time, was already known of to Britain. James Cook had mapped it out years before, and it seemed like the perfect place to leave convicts. Not only was it empty in their eyes, obviously they ignored the aboriginals who had been there for thousands of years, but the harsh, hot environment and the eight-month boat trip made it seem like a very suitable punishment, even for just stealing a loaf of bread. Life was tough for these initial convicts down under, trying to figure out how to farm the land with food in short supply. And once their sentences were carried out, these convicts weren't sent back to Blighty. Rather, they lived their life in Australia, carrying the stigma of their crimes. Over the years, this shame in their history has become a point of pride in Australia, and a brighter light has been shone on the harsh conditions these convicts had to endure at the hands of the British Empire, especially for the trivial crimes many of them committed in the first place. Transportation of convicts to Australia started in 1788 and ended in 1868, with 160,000 British convicts being sent to the land. From what I read, 70,000 of these people were sent to the island of Tasmania. It was in 1804 that the first convict ship landed on the island. Who knows if life here was any different to the lives of convicts on mainland Australia? Were they sent to the island simply as there was space there? Or was Tasmania seen as the next step up? When being sent from the UK to Australia wasn't enough, they had to be then sent to an even more remote location. Either way, Tasmania made itself home to many British convicts who led their life there, and places settled by convicts can still be found all across the island. Now I know what you are thinking, what has Australia's convict history got to do with a whole lot of weird place names on the island of Tasmania? Well not only did it help bulk out this video, it also plays into my theory as to why there's so many weird names on the island. And once again remember this is just my own theory, but if there's any group of people on our planet who are going to give a huge amount of places weird, silly and rude names, surely 18th and 19th century convicts of urban Britain from low income backgrounds have to be a prime contender right? I can just imagine the Dickensian archetypal crook giving somewhere a name like Grassy Bottom, Ass's Ear or even Humongous Hole. Place names in the new world, and I'm not quite sure if Australia counts as the new world but you get the point, are usually bestowed upon from quite lofty places and have respectable origins. Think of the South American nations or Australian settlements named after important figures, or the names that simply come from ancient roots which we have held on to. Tasmania however didn't really have big wigs or fancy governors to guide its nomenclature, especially for its lesser known areas. What it did have however were convicts. 
I can't help but feel that British convicts from poor backgrounds in the 18th and 19th century wouldn't have put the same amount of thought and finesse into place names as governors, politicians, and liberated peoples, and name nerds in general would have. Instead, they may have just given places easy to understand names, or even silly and rude names as those words were in their lexicon. These names may have even been a way to find some humour in their otherwise tough lives as convicts dragged to the other side of the world. Hopefully, these names brought a smile to their faces in the same way they bring a smile to our faces today. Like, there's a mountain on the island called the Nipples. Who do you think is more likely to name a mountain this? A fancy mountaineering survey team? Or some working class inner city English convicts having a laugh? Though, maybe this is a huge disservice to the Dickensian convict to presume they were all dumb and gave places rude names just to get a kick out of it. As I stated many times, this really is just my own theory on the matter as to explain why there are so many odd names on the island. If you have your own theory as to why this is the case, then I'd love to hear it down below. Maybe we can get a better idea as to why these names are so odd if we look at them on an individual level. I'm sure many of you came here just to hear some of these silly names, and while I've shared a few of them, this video really hasn't been that. Apologies. I wanted to find out why these names are so common, not just laugh at them. There's enough articles out there doing just that. Though to share a few actual etymologies of these names, we have Snug, which is believed to be named after how snugly sailors' ships fitted in their port. Nowhere else was named because its road went on to nowhere else, and the small town of Penguin was named after the fairy penguins that still inhabit its coast to this day. The names of Tasmania were suggested by Brian Richgruber, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as Name Explains Patreon Saint of the Names of Tasmania. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that name could be covered in a Name Explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a Name Explain Patreon Saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you all so much.